Hey, this is Yursia, I run a small investment firm that specializes in REITs like Realty Income. And in today's video, I'm gonna share my latest thoughts on its third quarter results. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support. So recently I posted a video in which I predicted that Realty Income would post strong third quarter results. The reason why I felt so confident about this prediction is that most of its netlist peers had already released their results and they had been great across the board. Vici Properties, Essential Properties Realty Trust, Agri Realty, EPR Properties, NNN REIT and NetStreet REIT had all beat expectations and some of them had even hiked their full year guidance. Moreover, Realty Income had just recently announced that it would acquire Spirit Realty Capital in an all stock transaction and I doubt that Spirit Realty Capital would have accepted such a deal if it knew that Realty Income was about to disappoint investors in the coming earnings report. After all, Spirit Realty Capital was getting paid only in stock. Well, the earnings are now out and overall they were really good. Realty Income beat quarterly expectations and it also raised its full year guidance on the back of strong acquisition activity. In the last quarter alone, it was able to acquire over 2 billion worth of properties and these acquisitions were accretive to its FFO per share despite its now higher cost of capital. But there's actually a lot more to these results and it appears that most investors missed some important elements. We listened to the quarterly conference call and here's the good, the bad and the ugly for you. So let's start with the good. Here we noted already that Realty Income beat quarterly expectations and hiked its guidance. This is obviously good news. But even better news in my opinion is the fact that the same property NOI growth of Realty Income appears to be accelerating. Historically, Realty Income has owned a lot of properties that only had a roughly 1% annual rent escalation in their leases. But following its many major portfolio acquisitions, it appears that its average annual rent escalation is now getting closer to 2%. Moreover, many of its legacy leases that only had 1% annual rent escalations are now gradually expiring and Realty Income is able to bump up their rents as it resigns new leases. In the last quarter, its rent recapture rates were about 107%, which essentially means that Realty Income is able to bump up rents on top of its annual rent escalations as it resigns new leases. This acceleration in its organic growth prospects is very encouraging because historically one of my main criticism about Realty Income has been that it suffered below average internal growth which made it highly dependent on future acquisitions to grow its FFO per share. I give a lot more value to organic growth prospects because it's a lot more consistent and predictable and therefore this is very good news. So now comes the bad. In the last quarter Realty Income was able to earn only 100 basis points spread on its new investments. 100 basis points is not good, but it's not bad either. But the bad news here is that these relatively small spreads were achieved by raising capital at nearly $60 per share. Today, share price is about 20% lower, which means that its future acquisitions in the coming quarter are likely to be even less accretive than in the third quarter. In the US, I would think that the spreads for Realty Income are today near zero because debt is also very expensive. Fortunately for Realty Income, the situation in Europe is a bit better as debt is a bit cheaper and cap rates also slightly higher. In the last quarter, Realty Income was able to issue some senior unsecured notes in Europe with a 9-year average term at a roughly 5% interest rate and then used these proceeds to acquire new properties at a 7.1% cap rate resulting in a nice spread. So what I'm hoping we see in the next quarters is that Realty Income switches its focus to the European market instead of targeting new acquisitions in the US where spreads are close to zero at the moment. If we see Realty Income keep pushing for new acquisitions in the US despite the now very small spreads, I would take this as a red flag of potential empire building mentality from its management team. Sorry to interrupt you for a second here, but if you think that this is valuable, it really helped me a lot if you click the like button. Thank you so much. And finally, now comes the ugly. And it is that we may have overestimated the average portfolio quality of Realty Income. Historically, the perception has always been that Realty Income was focused on the higher quality segment of the net lease market and therefore its properties would perform better than the average. However, earlier this year, one of Realty Income's tenants went bankrupt and they finally came to a resolution which was worse than what I expected. This tenant is called Cineworld and is the parent company of Regal Theaters. EPR Properties also owns a lot of properties that are leased to regal theaters and interestingly it was able to come to a much faster and better resolution than Realty Income. EPR came to a deal already in June and it was able to get a rent recapture rate of about 96% and 13 year average lease terms. 
Then Realty Income on the other hand took five months longer and its rent recapture rate was only about 85% and its lease terms also shorter at about 10 years. These properties are not really a big deal for Realty Income. They only generate about 1% of its total revenue. However, it does show you that the properties of Realty Income are not necessarily any better than those of its close peers. EPO properties is commonly perceived to be a lower quality net lease rate by the market and yet in this specific case its properties perform quite a bit better than those of Realty Income. For this reason in the coming quarters I will keep a close eye on the occupancy rate of Realty Income as well as its rent recapture rates and any potential difficulties with future tenants. Realty Income acquired many big portfolios in recent years and this may have reduced the average quality of its assets potentially leading to more risks down the line. So what do I think about Realty Income? Am I buying more shares? Am I selling it? Am I simply holding? Well, about a week ago when Realty Income saw its share price dip to $46 per share, we issued a trade alert at High Yield Landlord and bought some more of it for our retirement portfolio. At that price, we thought that Realty Income was a no-brainer, especially ahead of what we expected to be strong earnings. But even today at a roughly 10% higher share price, we think that Realty Income remains a great pick for conservative, income-oriented investors who want to maximize safe income. Despite the few concerns that we discussed in this video, the company is performing well, it's expected to keep growing in the coming years, and yet its price are just 12 times FFO and it offers a 6% dividend yield. So overall, we think that the risk to reward of Realty Income is very compelling here at these share prices and for this reason we expect to keep accumulating a larger position in the coming month. Now if you want to access the rest of my REIT portfolio, feel free to join High Yield Landlord which is my REIT newsletter for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link to it somewhere in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support and share my next one. Bye-bye.